Brazil wants the NASCAR Cup Series to come, plus NASCAR's Netflix show returns and an update on charter negotiations. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Some interesting news came out on Friday afternoon from Brazil. Sao Paulo, home of Interlagos, the Formula One track, wants to host the Clash in 2026 for the NASCAR Cup Series. It would be the first time the NASCAR Cup Series has gone to South America, the first time NASCAR has gone to South America. They, of course, have the NASCAR Brazil Series, but taking 36 chartered NASCAR Cup Series cars down to Sao Paulo would be a bit of an undertaking and an interesting one if NASCAR wants to take on that challenge. So... Brazil, Sao Paulo, formalized their um, desire, essentially, to want the NASCAR Cup Series. They formally said that they would like to host the Clash in 2026. Here's the interesting part, though. They did not specify where they would hold the Clash at. Would it be in a stadium, kind of like what we saw at the LA Coliseum, or would it be at Interlagos on the Formula One circuit? Personally, I would love to see the Cup cars at Interlagos. I absolutely love the layout of that racetrack and really, really think it would be a fun time. However, if you're trying to attract a lot of people and give them a taste of what NASCAR is, short track racing, essentially what NASCAR was built on, the foundation of it, putting it in a stadium makes a lot more sense. And I know a lot of fans aren't going to be happy about that, but it is an interesting avenue for them to potentially explore because obviously the clash is expected to go to Bowman Gray Stadium for 2025 as NASCAR continues to explore other options for it. Mexico has been uh, listed as a place that they could potentially go down there. Sao Paulo is a really enticing one as well. It's a big market for General Motors, so you would have to think that there would be some manufacturer support behind that. Getting 36 cars down there, though, like I said, not going to be easy. You can't drive there because Panama decided to not allow the, the the highway to continue on. You can take a ferry around that area, though, and continue on your journey. But that's about a little over 8,000 miles. And I don't think any truck drivers are signing up to drive 8,000 miles through the South American jungle. It could get kind of sketchy through there. So you could, of course, air freight all of your cars in. It would be a bit more of an undertaking than what Formula One does on a week by week basis. Or you could freight everything down on cargo ships. Just have it go out of North Carolina or South Carolina. You could even drive it down to Miami port there sail down to Sao Paulo, unload at one of their ports, and then take everything over to the racetrack. But if you thought the uproar from drivers and team members was a lot when they went to Chicago because it was going to be unsafe, and now a lot when they talk about going back to Mexico City, going to Sao Paulo is going to be an absolute uproar because Sao Paulo is notoriously a rough place, a place where Formula One teams have to hire extra security, a place where Formula One teams every single year seem to get robbed at some point, whether on their way to the racetrack or while they're at the racetrack even. So it's not exactly the safest place in the world. The interesting part about this, though, is the NFL is having their opening Friday game in September in Sao Paulo between the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles. There's one thing about Sao Paulo that they warned NFL teams about. Nobody can wear green because the local soccer team's rival apparently wears green and the people there will lose their minds, which is interesting because they sent the Green Bay Packers, emphasis on green, to Sao Paulo, and they're like, hey, you can't wear green. What? You sent the two teams where their predominant color is green. But on the NASCAR side of things, no interstate battery cars. Leave those babies back in Charlotte. Can't take them down there. I know some fans are going to be like, put Denny Hamlin in interstate batteries cars. You need nefarious people out here. No, don't do that. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., leave that Irish Spring uh, livery back home because, well, I don't know. Ricky does have a tendency to just run into every foreigner that comes over to NASCAR. He might just take on the entire country and just start hitting, hitting them all in that 47 car for JTG Doherty Racing or whatever their name is going to continue to be. So, yeah, you're going to have to pick and choose your uh, paint schemes when you go down there. Make sure there's not any green on the race car. Green notorious with race cars, though. Not exactly what people like to have on their car if you're a little bit superstitious. But the Cup Series going to Sao Paulo is an interesting uh, possibility. I would like to see it. Honestly, if they race at Interlagos, your boy might be catching a flight down to Sao Paulo to, to watch that race because I think it would be highly entertaining if it's in a stadium situation. Nah, I'm not really that interested in doing <laughs> that so much. But who doesn't love a good adventure every now and then? Plus, it's, what, an hour ahead of East Coast time, so that's a fun little quirky time zone to end up in. Not that that ever matters. That's just the geeky geography side of my brain that's like, oh, it'd be pretty cool to just be one hour ahead. Shut up. All right. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new Bra or Driven shirt on. I almost said BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today.
Moving on to the other big topic that also came out on Friday. NASCAR has decided to go forward with a second season of their full speed docuseries on Netflix. Round of applause for everybody over there from Tim Clark all the way down. First season, five episodes was really great. I wish it was more episodes, honestly. I wish they did a race per episode. Give me 10 episodes of the playoffs. Uh, I thought everything about that show was really, really well done. Um, the ending of the Martinsville episode, the penultimate round of the championship, just seeing the raw emotion from Tyler Reddick, William Byron, Denny Hamlin, um, even Ryan Blaney locking himself in. All of that was top tier, exactly what we've been asking for for NASCAR to show none of the sitcom stuff that they've tried to do. Um, show us what actually happens, the raw emotion. And I think they did an absolutely fantastic job uh, with it. So I'm glad that it's coming back for a second season. But there's a catch. Some teams have talked about boycotting, participating in this second season until a charter agreement is in place, until there's an agreement on the revenue split, everything that goes along with that. I'm not, I have no idea what team said that they would boycott it, but a team that was super predominant in season one of this show was 2311 Racing. They had like unprecedented access to 2311 Racing. Bubba Wallace, Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin were all huge figures in that show. Who is one of the biggest opponents of NASCAR in this charter negotiation? Denny Hamlin, 2311 Racing. I would imagine that they might be the ones that were like, hey, we're not going to do this unless it gets settled here. Good news though. Adam Stern in the Sports Business Journal did report that uh, the teams have made progress with NASCAR in their charter negotiations and the revenue negotiations. Uh, from what Stern said, teams and NASCAR have agreed on a TV revenue split, which is great because, as we know, previously teams were receiving 25 uh, percent, tracks receiving 60 uh, percent, and then NASCAR was taking the rest of it, uh, you know, through there. So 65 percent for the um for the tracks but so apparently they've agreed on a tv revenue split that is a great first step there's still negotiations going on in terms of governance nascar teams would like a seat at the table when it comes to rule changes in the direction of the sport not necessarily sure if the france family wants to give that uh, up they also would like um uh, the opportunity for new revenue streams. So obviously like with sports betting coming in, whatever that next new revenue stream is, teams want a cut of that as well, which I think that they're absolutely entitled to. It comes down to what the split of that will be and the future of it. I get from NASCAR standpoint, they don't want to lock in a number because they don't necessarily know. It's, it's a mystery, right? It's an unknown, but you're locking in a number for an unknown number that you're not really sure what that number could possibly be. So I get why that would be a bit of a back and forth. And of course, teams still want permanent charters. NASCAR very much not willing to go permanent charters. Last time that we updated this, they were willing to go 14 years with charters through this current upcoming starting in 2025, seven year TV deal, plus an additional seven years after that. Honestly, if I were the teams, I would probably take that because 14 years is a long time. A lot can change in that time. And that gives you 14 more years to sort of cement the future of the charter system. And for some of these guys, I know a lot of these owners want to lock down charters now so that their families have these tangible assets, essentially. Um, 14 years is a long time. So if that's the best you can do, I think it's worth a compromise there. However, I understand the fight from teams. So it's a tough back and forth and fans, unfortunately, are just kind of stuck in the middle here. But the fact that the show is coming back for a second season, I could not be more pumped about that. I really liked it. I hope that they do just as good of a job for season number two. Dale Jr. is going to be involved in it. And honestly, with Prime coming in next year, as well as Warner Brothers Digital, hopefully we get some more NASCAR content on there. Prime is doing the Dale Earnhardt documentary, of course. Maybe we'll get something over on Max for whatever, you know, docu-series, documentary show that they want to do. Uh, more NASCAR content is never a bad thing. More high quality NASCAR content is never a bad thing for us at all. So let me know in the comments what you think about potentially going to Brazil. Plus, what do you think about NASCAR's second season of Full Speed and the ongoing charter negotiations? Also, I have a video out tomorrow. I think there's a bit of a change for a prominent um, Xfinity Series driver that we'll have to talk about. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.